So I'm uh, very happy to welcome now Aga and Crystal. Hello, Aga. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So um, I welcome first, I start with Aga, who is, I guess, conservator and researcher specialized in contemporary art. She holds a PhD from the University in Amsterdam, has research carried out of uh, the NACA program and situated at the crossroad S3 Road, so beautiful of art history, theory, conservation, museology, and heritage studies. And currently, she holds a position at M Plus in Hong Kong. And her talk is, as far as I understood, developed in a dialogue with Crystal. Pass me, Crystal, welcome. Crystal is also conservator, researcher, and collection care specialist. And from 2017 to 20, she worked as well as senior conservator at M Plus in Hong Kong. She joins the preventive conservation section at the science um, department at the Getty. And currently she's developing practical ways to implement more sustainability collection care practices. So that brings us into our topic of the afternoon session. And um, yeah, please go ahead. I'm very curious about your talk. Thank you. Thank you so much, Caroline. Um, I will share my screen now. Uh, do you see my screen? I hope, I hope so. <laughs> um, so good afternoon, everyone. And um, thank you so much for having us uh, today with you. Um, it's a great event um, and we're very honored, honored to be a part of it. Um, I will jump directly into the presentation and I will start with the concept of preventive conservation within the museum context which is defined as all measured and actions aimed at minimizing future deterioration, loss or damage to collections. Examples are risk assessment, development of guidelines for use and care, registration, storage, environmental management, emergency planning, etc. These tasks uh, may be shared by collection managers, conservators, curators and other institutional administrators. But how to include in this framework conservation approaches specific to contemporary art and which are the tasks of preventive conservator in a contemporary art collection? How the notion of preventive conservation can be expanded to accommodate the nature of contemporary artworks? This presentation is a reflection on a year long collaboration between Aga and Christelle in shaping preventive care strategies at M Plus Museum in Hong Kong, an emerging large scale institution that currently builds a collection of contemporary visual art, design and architecture and broadly understood visual culture. The story starts when Christelle a researcher and collection care professional specialized in light sensitivity of heritage objects. And at that time, a senior conservator at M Plus recruits Aga, a conservator and researcher specialized in contemporary art as preventive conservator. Back then, M Plus buildings were still under construction and practices related to collection care still in the making. And this presented an interesting opportunity for us to experiment with unconventional approaches to preservation and care grounded in our professional and research interests. Over to you, Christelle. Let me take you back to 2017 when I started working at M. The picture on the background shows the state of the M building at the time. Looking forward to the opening, scheduled back then for 2019, I had initiated a rough risk analysis and will now briefly present its results, only focusing on describing what I'm naming here, the structural risks. I listed four inter interconnected ones, starting with the obvious risk related to the early stage of the project. The number of staff members had just reached 62, among which six conservators with a rather large diversity of museum cultures, and five of them, including me, just recently hired. Half of M plus team was constituted by curators, and there was logically a lack of workflows or policies. The scale of M plus building created its own logistic and operational risks. The complexity associated to the project was inducing other types of risk. The different systems involved related to the collection, to the team, to the buildings, to other infrastructures needed indeed to be and to stay connected. Each of the mentioned subsystems was growing at its own and rather fast rate. The situation was overwhelming, creating the need to avoid panicking. 
The key was to focus on tackling issues that could be acted upon and on articulating the two equally important temporalities at stake. The one linked to the institution opening and the other associated to, to its projected growth. The first priority identified was to ensure and sustain the coherence of the project by developing the workflows required to open the institution while formulating the key policies necessary to guide the museum growth until reaching its mature state. The second identified priority comes from issues and needs associated with the M plus collection. Some are listed here. I will only briefly develop a few more, a few more considering their importance. It should be noted that M plus collection is made of a variety of collection types, such as design, visual art, archive, requiring different approaches to conservation and care. A rather large part of the collection is constituted with contemporary artworks, in which documentation is playing a key role to identify the inherent viability of the item from an unacceptable change. Unfortunately, there was a general lack of information on collection for various reasons. Part of the collection is coming from private donors and had only a limited level of document documentation at time of acquisition. Some M plus colleagues may not have been familiar with the importance of documentation to preserve contemporary art, or time was missing to properly document due to the fast pace of acquisition. To properly display the items selected for the inaugural, 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 inaugural exhibition sorry, and plan for the care and future display, there was an urgent need to develop proper information management while freezing the existing backlog. Last but not least, I had some concerns with the future increase of the energy consumptions of M plus due to the global warming, Hong Kong tropical climate, the scale and complexity of M plus buildings. I felt it was important to develop a rationale permitting to improve the institution's sustainability while taking into account the collection needs. To help addressing this issue, it was decided to develop a value-based framework for collection care and conservation practice. In this approach, the unwanted change of the collection item and its associated value are managed in a lifespan selected according to the item's value. This permits focusing on mitigating the greater risk. Such value-based approach is highly dependent on collection documentation to understand the function and the role of the item in the collection. It should be noted that the concept of sustainability used here is a one recently developed by David Saunders in which three aspects, societal, social, and operational are added to the economical and ecological aspects traditionally used to assess sustainability. For all the presented reasons, it was decided to create it for a position for a preventive conservator with the main duties of developing the relevant policies, procedures, and workflows for the respectful and careful use of M plus collection, and with a special focus on organizing conservation documentation and on contributing to structure and develop an effective collection information management considering the collection use and needs. Future plan, future plan back then was to create an overarching preventive conservation section that would cover all activities producing important data on collection and its care, including documentation techniques such as artist interview and also conservation science. I will now let Aga present her work. Thank you much, so much, Christelle. Um, as we are all here aware uh, autonomous objects that communicate and mean the same from one context to the next are becoming increasingly rare in the current artistic practice. The identity of a contemporary artwork can be distributed between physical objects and processes, concepts, and contexts. Artists are no longer bound by the limits of material or immaterial classifications and might use any digital, bodily, or other means of expression that might be as important for the artwork's significance as physical objects. Consequently, al although artwork's physical component is well protected against potential deterioration, it can lose its value because it does not support anymore artwork's intended communication, functionality, or use due to, for example, technical obsolescence or decontextualization. Preventive conservation relates to, no uh, to notions of 
uh, deterioration, damage and loss. And there is an implicit understanding that the irreversible change to the state of an object is not good. Nevertheless, since late 1990s, conservation is seen as a process of managing change rather than stopping or reversing it. This means understanding the object in context and being able to discuss value, significance and meaning with stakeholders before deciding on treatment or preventive measures. And this approach became a cornerstone of the development of the field of contemporary art conservation, especially that many contemporary art forms allow for greater parameters of change than traditional artworks. Change is often an integral part of the artistic concept, and therefore it is important to establish practices that allow for identifying, documenting, and managing this change. Taking those observations as a point of departure, we had a feeling that to protect the integrity of contemporary art at, in M plus collections, traditional notion of primitive conservation needs to be expanded. The framework of 10 agents of deterioration serves to categorize risks to the cultural heritage objects and it is a reference point to, for risk assessment, a key tool for setting up preventive strategies. Of course, contemporary art collections comprise of physical entities that are vulnerable to all those 10 agents. However, as Crystal mentioned before at M+, at that particular moment in time, the issue identified as the most urgent yet possible to tackle was the lack of information. It was especially challenging for complex works, such as installation art, functional objects, and software-based works, but also relevant to simpler ones, such as sculptures and paintings. So gathering, organizing, and producing information about the works became one of our main concerns and the priority not only for minimizing future loss or value, but also for defining the value or role of the physical object in relation to the overall integrity of the collection item. To systematize our approach and keep it within the framework of preventive conservation as defined in the field, we looked at the 10th agent of deterioration, dissociation. We argue that this notion, traditionally related to the poor labeling, offers a space for inclusion of some of the conservation approaches specific to contemporary art under the umbrella of preventive care. It might cover, for example, if insufficient information to instantiate an artwork and in consequence in the loss of its conceptual integrity. This expansion might allow for inclusion of documentation strategies, tools and methods, such as artist interviews in preventive conservation toolbox. The control of dissociation relies heavily on effective policies and procedures. Dissociation risks are minimized through systematic and correct implementation of procedures and tools that allows for linking objects to data. Additionally, while analyzing the 10 agents of deterioration for assessing risks to contemporary artworks, we identified specific risks that are difficult to position within this framework. And this is, for example, technical obsolescence, wear and tear, inherent vices, file corruption caused by software or hardware malfunction, risk related to contextual dependencies like lack of suppliers or declining craft skills. To summarize, our approach to address risks for the to the long-term preservation of contemporary art from ZM Plus was to put documentation in the forefront of all the preventive actions and to take initiative for the development of policies, procedures, and workflows to mitigate risks of dissociation in the various stages of museum lives of collection items. In the following slides, I provide examples of tasks that have been included under the umbrella of preventive conservation at M+. And this is, of course, in addition to the traditional preventive measures. It is important to note that all those tasks were carried out collaboratively by colleagues from the conservation team and other teams and departments, and were focused on maintaining consistency across collection categories, media, formats, and materials. The first task was to design workflows and tools for documentation of objects from Ampas collection. And that is from condition reports to specific to contemporary art forms, such as iteration report for variable artworks. The next one, ongoing and never ending, is Shaping Conservation Studio, collection management system interface that allows for implementing documentation workflows and tools to gather conservation specific data for, conduct, for conducting surveys, collection risk assessment, and in consequence, for prioritization of preventive measures. 
Management of conservation related documentation included design a uh, designing a structure of conservation object files that integrates concepts both from the field of contemporary art conservation. We also put together artist questionnaires for acquisition of time-based media works. We worked collaboratively on acquisition and accessioning workflows for items entering MPLUS collections. For example, a workflow for acquisition of digital items and a workflow for securing artists providing, provided installation instructions. We work on designing safe environment for storing and accessing digital assets. We initiate and conduct research projects focused on developing institutional approaches and standards to preservation and care of software-based items, research-based artworks and art projects. We promote collaboration between artists and conservators as key to successful perpetuation of complex art forms and advocate for the use of artist interviews. To conclude, contemporary art forms are continuing to push the envelope of not only conservation methodologies and ethics, but also of areas of professional expertise and specializations within the setting of institutional collection care. The aim of this presentation is not to change the organization of conservation field or common understanding of notions key to conservation professions such as preventive conservation, but rather to advocate for more space for experimentation, alternative approaches and reflective practice. Let's do not take positions descriptions for granted and we, we all need to adjust our strategies to the history, context and content of our collections and the specificity of our institutional settings. And um, thank you so much. And also we would like to thank uh, to all past and present teammates from the M plus conservation team, as well as all the colleagues from other teams and departments that took part in the process of defining collection care and M plus.